Unlock the power of cryptocurrency with Orange Brick Road as your guide. The homepage provides an overview of our services, crypto education, consulting, trading, tax, bookkeeping, loans, real-world assets, estate planning, scam recovery, and more. Explore our comprehensive courses tailored for beginners to advanced crypto enthusiasts. Our team of experts offers personalized consulting across all aspects of crypto, including everything from how to purchase your very first crypto coin, the importance of security, reporting requirements, and the latest developments in the decentralized finance world. Join our thriving community, attend events, and network with like-minded individuals. Stay up to date with our blog covering the latest crypto trends and analysis. Get started today by enrolling in a course or booking a consultation. Navigate the crypto world with confidence. Orange Brick Road, your path to understanding. This is an episode I did with Adam Stokes. Adam Stokes is Australia's number one and largest crypto podcaster and has been for years. I have followed him for years and in this interview we cover all aspects of crypto, why it's important, where it's going and what it is doing to change finance as we know it. I regard him as a dear friend. Please enjoy. It's the Crypto Hour of Power Malloy with you. And uh, of course I've got Brandon across the other side. Brandon, great to see you mate. Thank you very much for being here. My pleasure, mate, and I love your Hawaiian shirts once again. <laughs> oh, look, I like to keep it, you know, fresh. Fresh, okay? is, in, is that how you the, put it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the only way I'm going to be fresh, put it that way, but never mind. Hey, mate, we've got a special guest on the phone, I believe, uh, Adam Stokes. Yes, we do. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, hi, Adam. How are you going, mate? Hey, team. How are you? <laughs> yeah, very good. Very well, mate. Sorry about the technical difficulties. For some reason, my uh, laptop's just frozen up, so we're just doing it over fo- over the phone. But uh, anyway, so uh, more importantly, um, how's Clucky going, mate? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much for asking, and thank you for having me. For those of you who don't know, Clucky is my chicken, my first chicken. I have many chickens. I don't know how I got into chicken farming. It just happened 10 years ago getting one chicken. Right. Once you get a rooster, they start to multiply. My I've had stories, Clucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, she's gone. She went unconscious, and I thought, oh, it's not good. And I couldn't let her go. She was my first chicken at 10 years old, so I took her to the vet, and the vet said, put her down. And I'm like, oh, has she got any chance? She said, probably about 20 to 30%. Two weeks later, she's now back out with the rest of the chooks, and she's doing wonderful. She's an old girl, but I'm very proud of her, and thank you for asking. <laughs> I, I love this. We've got a crypto show. First thing we do, livestock. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'll probably make an NFT out of it, don't you? Of course. <laughs> That's it. Capitalise. We'll call it uh, Clucky Coin. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. All right, mate, for just uh, for the, the listeners that don't know who you are, and if you're into crypto and you don't know who Adam Stokes is, shame on you. Um, so just give us a little bit of an intro of, uh, of uh, what you're about, your background, how you got into crypto, that sort of thing. Yeah, so about six or seven years, uh, probably seven or eight years, gosh, time is moving so quickly. About seven years ago, I went to a friend's house for dinner. They said, you have to watch what this documentary is telling me. It was halfway through. I said, oh, yeah, whatever. They said, no, we watch it from the beginning. I really wasn't interested, but they insisted that I watch it, and I was immediately hooked. Essentially, my journey started watching this documentary where mining was talking about this mythical machine where you plug it into a wall and money comes out the other end. As anyone would want a Lambo quite easily, I thought, well, I'm straight into this. That was my on-ramp into crypto uh, mining. I was heavily mining uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Dashcoin, Sirecoin. But then what actually evolved from that, it went beyond money and it went to the democratization of money. As I often say, many people come for the Lambo, but they stay for the revolution. Well, you're a car guy, so already you're a winner. Full stop. Okay. Um, (laughs) From one car guy. Many of us are. Absolutely. And uh, we love our toys. There's no doubt about that. So um, well, you, you were an economist or something. You did some degrees in uh, some fancy universities. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I've, it, it's funny. If you actually look for the definition of what an economist is, it's not so black and white. But yes, one of my degrees is economics. I've also got degrees in management, languages, and a master's of business. But the truth is I didn't really actually understand money until I got into crypto. I thought I knew yep. what economics mm-hmm. was. I do have formal qualifications in it. But I put this out there to everyone to say, if you think that you understand what money is, I actually challenge you to really question what it is, where it comes from, what backs it. And once you actually start to understand that 
fiat, the mm. Latin term for it is, uh, let it be, or it is because I say it is, the money that we use today as in dollars and cents and euros and pounds and so forth, it's backed by nothing. And it is, in fact, the biggest Ponzi scheme in the history of humanity. Meanwhile, the people who make this fake money called fiat, they're pointing at everything else and claiming it is, in fact, a, a Ponzi scheme. So once you understand money and the background to economics, you actually understand the power of Bitcoin. There is Bitcoin and then there is everything else. If you can make that distinction, it's not to say that other coins don't have value, but rather there is first Bitcoin, which is the new, hard, sound, immutable, decentralized, borderless money. And then there's all the other types of cryptos that they've built on top of this technology that mm. is blockchain. Yeah, no, 100%. Amen to that, brother. Amen to that. Um, yeah, it's a, for, for uh, uh, people that are sort of, I don't know, trying to understand crypto and, um, you know, as new people or people who have been in it for a while, um, I know that's uh, the last uh, podcast that you do. Like, you do a Sunday summary every single Sunday, obviously. Um, yeah, and, and you, you went into it that last time, um, or the last one that you did. Um about basically about what has value and um you know if you are to invest in the crypto be in it for the long long term you know um yeah. for the long haul can you go into that a bit more explain that because a lot of people they, they think oh i've heard about this guy like you mentioned on, on your one like they, they put a hundred dollars into dogecoin all of a sudden they're a millionaire oh it's all great you know, I'm gonna, i can do that and achieve that myself but um it's one of the hardest things to sort of well, I, I try to get across to clients is, you know, um, that you, you've got to have a time horizon and a realistic one. You know, it, it can't be, OK, in 12 months time, I, I, you know, because that's when you have short term sort of cap, capital in the sense that oh, you put a thousand dollars into something or ten thousand dollars or whatever. And then it's just dropped by 40 percent. You panic and then you sort of all, all out, you know, so, so you hit yeah. it as a loss. It's a really good question, Brandon. And the, the problem is, is that, in fact, a lot of millionaires have been made very quickly. And that's all you really hear about. There's, there's mm. kind of two extremes that you hear in the mainstream. One, Bitcoin's a scam and crypto's a scam and it's all going to zero. And the other extreme is there was this 18-year-old kid who got in early. He put in 10 bucks or 100 bucks and he walked away with $53 million. Now, the, the irony is, is that both are, in fact, true. Some parts of crypto are absolutely a scam, just as some parts of the internet are absolutely a scam. And equally, some guys got in and girls got in early, very early, put in a small amount and made unforeseeable amounts of money. I say those are the two extremes. Mm. Once you understand the two extremes, let's start dialing it back to reality. So crypto isn't a scam. Scammers are the scam. There are currently 21,000 different cryptocurrencies on, in the world, and it's expanding very quickly. Mm. If you think of the Internet of Information, when the Internet first was, I guess, established or created, there wasn't even really one website. There was just an internet. But then we had websites and the World Wide Web. And now there's millions of websites. Some are legitimate, some are not. Some are scams. Some are just for a bit of fun. The same is now happening with the internet of money. The internet of money is the ability to move value from point A to point B without the need for a middleman, such as a bank or a government or some type of organization to take that money, take that value, act as the middleman, take a cut, block it, stop it, seize it, monitor it. That is a very prehistoric model. When it comes to making money in these markets, the reality is there is still, in fact, a lot of opportunities to make unforeseeable amounts of money in a very small, short time. Equally, there's also the opportunity to lose unforeseeable amounts of money mm, yes. in a very short time. <laughs> what normally happens is people come into this space and have never invested before in their life. They've heard about this guy who put in a few bucks into Dogecoin. They're now a multi-millionaire and they're like, right, I want to do that. So their very first move into crypto land or any investment space is they take all the equity out of their house, they sell their car, they take all their life savings and they put it all in on some random coin that old Jono down the pub told them about. It goes south and they lose everything. Oh, but Jono's that, never given me a steer, you know, a bum steer. Come that's on. right. Jono's always on track, isn't he? <laughs> There's always a Jono. <laughs> yeah, particularly when you met Jono just at the pub last week exactly. and he knows best. <laughs> the, the long game is the safe way. The safe way. And even if you don't like crypto, uh, if you read my book, 28 Pro Trader Tips, The Art of Trading, there's really two sides to making money in crypto markets or money markets or other markets. You've got the speculators who are doing marginal swing trading. They're coming in and out of their positions of buying and selling very quickly. But then you have the other side, which is the majority of us. It's the investors. Every week, every month, every fortnight, you put in 10 bucks or 100 bucks or 1,000 bucks, whatever your expendable 
income is or cash is, you put it into either a savings account, an ETF, a superannuation. Uh, some people put it onto the horses or into the pokies, and other people put it into the crypto markets. Yeah. Now, you don't have to go all in in any one market. I'm a big believer of, of diversifying. But ultimately, if we keep things simple and we look at something like Bitcoin, if you have been putting $10 into Bitcoin every month for the last 10 years, you would be a multi, multi, multi millionaire. You never would have had to pick the exact top. You never would have had to pick the exact bottom. You wouldn't have worried about prices moving up and down. Every week you would have put in 10 bucks and you'd be loaded. The same is still available for many coins out there. The game is, which coin do you pick? Mm, some coins, yeah, well, some coins are low risk, low return. Some coins are high risk, high return. Which one do you go for? Well, you answer that and I'll pay you. <laughs> yeah. But you can diversify your risk. You can do your you know, research, as they always say. You can listen to other people's opinions, not the hyped people. Don't don't ever listen to old Jono down the pub or someone who goes, go all in on Dogecoin. Listen to people who have lost money. Listen to people yep. who have been in the game for a long time. Listen to the people who are, in fact, not trying to sell you a dream or a particular product, but rather educate you in the concept of investing. Yeah, and it, like uh, another point that you make too is, is invest in yourself, you know, so that, that, yeah. that includes like uh, in, investing in the knowledge you know and and that's that's a that, real hard thing isn't it like especially when you first start off on crypto because there's so much information out there i mean what, what yeah, would you... it, it's so big well look it's the, the thing is people we, we are all fundamentally lazy and we yep. are impatient yes. so we'd much we'd much rather sit in front of the tv with a beer uh, watching the footy and someone paying us millions of dollars to do so. Now, yeah, wait, hang on, where is that job? Can I sign up now? <laughs> <laughs> you, you've got to be a rich kid, win a lotto, or have some type of inheritance. Or, I mean, the, the reality is it actually does happen to some people. But, you know, some people get struck by lightning twice. Exactly. So unfortunately, <laughs> most people just want that easy path. So when it comes to learning, first of all, I, I'm a big believer in multitasking in the sense that we are given so much information for free. So when I was you know, back in my day, when I was first in university, if I had to study something, I had to actually sit in a library, open a textbook and read it. <laughs> and it was a lot, it's really time consuming and energy consuming. Absolutely. But now I can go to the gym, work on my body just in a healthy sense to keep fit and keep moving. And I could be listening to hundreds if not thousands of podcasts at two times speed over many years and absorb the information from countless great minds around the planet for free. That is and actually I don't even really... such a brilliant idea. It really is. It's such a basic principle or right, uh, suggestion, but it makes complete sense. Yeah, whack a podcast yeah. in, gain that information, and multitask, you know? Audio books. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, great advice. Yeah, and it's good that you raise that, Brandon, because there's two parts to it. You've, you've really got the micro and the macro. So at the moment, we're at a crypt, in a crypto winter, and this is the time that you're starting to look at the, the big macro picture. That's where you get into your audio books and you're looking at some of the big strategies from the big players. In a crypto summer or a crypto bull run, when you're making 100% per day, that's when you're really getting into the micro stuff. You know, what's this thing doing right now? And that's where you really need yep. to listen to like What's YouTube happened in the last 24 hours? <laughs> yeah, because it just moves so quickly. Yep. So by diversifying, just as you diversify your, I guess your diet in the sense that you've got to have a balanced diet. The same is true with balanced information. You need to hear the left and right of arcs. You know, he says that, she says this. They're for it, they're <clears throat> against it. But also, what's a big picture and what's a little picture? Once you start being very humble and being able to pivot on your position and understand that you could be wrong, you're not going to do yourself out of an investment or a bad trade. You're in fact going to create the opportunity to make a lot of money. So the number, I guess the top three things I'd give you is this. Mm. One, multitask. Whilst you're walking the dog, whilst you're driving the car, whilst you're at the gym, whilst you're doing something, listen to a podcast or information in the background. Two, be grateful that that information is free. And mm. because it's free, you should be hungry to get more of it because it's mm -hmm. there for you. And then three, be humble. Be able to pivot on your position. If you think Bitcoin's a scam today, just consider you could be wrong. Equally, if you think Bitcoin's the greatest thing in the world, think the other way try and always be humble and and be able to pivot on your position because if you can do that you stand to make a lot of money yeah totally agree with that it says yeah people that go all in on something whether it's an idea or a coin 
you know, it's it's like you've got to look at both sides of everything. Well, I, I look at know? it back, you know, 20 odd years ago when I was investing in the stock market. You, you don't throw everything into, you know, the stock that makes you money quickly, right, mm. is also highest risk. So, you know, you're going to balance it out. You're going to use right. some blue chip, obviously. You run a base, okay, and you fer- you, you build on that, that great foundation. Yep. And I would absolutely see that in crypto, it's the same way. You you find the really the safe stuff, the stuff that's you know been proven over time, and you use that as your building blocks. And yeah, you, know, you, you yeah, still have your mix, speculative stuff. Absolutely, mix know. it up, mix it up. Like, uh, uh, where's uh, Warren Buffett made all his money in the last ten years, Adam? Well, there you go. Great question. So clearly, you were listening to my um, yes, podcast I was, on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so. Two parts to this. First of all, time in the market. If you look at what Warren Buffett did, one of arguably the greatest investors in history, he admits that the main reason why he made so much money is because he was just time in the market. He was there for so long. Now, he made millions from the age of 10 years of age to the age of 70 or 80 years of age, but he made the most amount of money in his last decade or so within Apple. And that shows us that on one hand, you think, well, if to be Warren Buffett, I've got to be investing for the next 80 years. Well, maybe time in the market does help. But the truth is, because technology stocks are moving so quickly, because we have the velocity of money, because we have open information, because we have the internet of money and knowledge and all of these opportunities for more money to come in and the minimum buy-in as a cent as opposed to $500 on the traditional stock exchange or a minimum buy-in of hundreds of thousands of dollars in the real estate market, the reality is time in the market now can be five to 10 years as opposed to 10 to 50 years. Yep. You can easily make a lot of money in a year. You can easily lose a lot of money in a year mm-hmm. as well. But five years is a very reasonable horizon to go through a full Bitcoin cycle, have some losses, have some wins, learn a lot, and really lay a foundation to make some stupid amounts of money. Just to reaffirm that, Adam, what sort of time frame did you just say? Uh, comfortably five years, yeah. five to ten years. Yeah. You, you're talking, you're talking about what traditional, uh, the trad trades I call them, the traditional trader traders. What the trad trades do in thirty to forty years, you yeah. can comfortably do in five years. But here's the thing: for some reason, so many people are impatient. They're like five years. No, I want it in five days. It's like, well, <laughs> yeah. who do you think you are? I mean, <laughs> I want it in five minutes. But be humble, play the long game, and understand. Five years is not that long. It's not. Yeah, that's right. And if you don't start making changes today, you're going to be the same tomorrow. You know, well so you've got to start somewhere, you know. I and mean, the world's changed a lot in the last five years. Five years ago, uh, people could identify what a woman was. You can't anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> everything's changed. <laughs> that's a very good point. Very good point. You know, it's funny. I'll, I'll just, um, I watched, uh, as you know, I've been watching, um, I've mentioned it a few times on the channel. I've been really enjoying Formula One Drive to Survive on oh, Netflix. That's a wonderful show. And yeah, it's, it's so good, not just for the driving, but if you look at the business, the human side, the psychology, mm. but there's actually a series from 2018, which is five years ago. And I mention that because when you look at the Formula One cars of five years ago, they look like caveman prehistoric, you know, YZ Falcons yep. from the yesteryear. <laughs> yeah, and they're only five years ago compared to what they are now. Now, we're talking about a physical object. When you look at the evolution of money and technology and information knowledge and management within five years, we are moving at light speed. So five years is, in fact, very reasonable. Yeah, and I think that if you want to build something, if you're not prepared to put five years in, then your expectations are unrealistic, quite frankly. Uh, Agreed entirely. Yeah. Um, Okay, as far as price performance is concerned with, with crypto... Why is there so much money to be made? Is it because we're early into the uh, into the economy? Is it the, the start of the network effect? Is it the, the, the liquidity? You know, like what what makes it have so much value and to go up so quickly? Okay, so a few parts. It's a great question, by the way. So a few parts. Every First question all, I've got is great, Adam. Just assume yeah, that. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'll call out a bad one, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So if you actually look at anyone who invests against technology typically loses. Now, of course, there's bad technology moves out there, but essentially if you bet against the internet, well, good on you and and see what happened to you. If you invested against digital images, ask Kodak how that went. If you invested against digital streaming, ask Blockbuster how that went. So essentially when it comes to digital and technology, if you bet against it, you're going to have a bad day. 
when it comes to the reason why crypto moves so far and fast, first of all, the markets never sleep. So if you look at traditional markets, they're typically open nine to four thirty, depending on the exchange, five days yeah. a week, yeah. forty to Minus forty-eight to holidays. fifty. Yeah, public holidays, bank holidays. So if you actually map it out of traditional markets. They're, they're asleep or not operating more often than they're in fact open. Hmm, yep. Well, crypto doesn't stop just as the same as the internet stops. We don't get to five o'clock in the afternoon and the internet shuts down. It never stops. Actually, that's a really that interesting is- thought. Sorry to interrupt. I was just, I've never thought of it that way. The reality hmm. is, okay, eight hour workday, uh, hmm. crypto is working 24, it's working three times as much. So therefore, yep. there's this speed right there. Yep. And you've got the different, uh, it's, different it's time actually, zones. It's about, it's about, Six times as much because there there's go. no weekends, there's yeah, no public true, holidays, true. There's, there's no doubt. Yeah. yeah, and so that that sheer velocity in itself, when people say, "Oh, it's impossible, it can't move that fast," it's like it never sleeps. Mm. It doesn't shut down. The internet doesn't shut down. That in itself creates unforeseeable amounts of velocity. Then the second part is the buy-in. So when I first started investing at eighteen, I had to have a five hundred dollar minimum buy-in. Now that's that's over two decades ago. So five hundred dollars back then was like a thousand dollars today. Sure. And when you're a uni student and you need a thousand dollars to invest into one stock, mm. that's a that's a big risk. Oh, look, and when that's you're a, a uni move. student, that's a lot of two minute noodles. I mean, come on, right? Yeah. <laughs> but that's a year's worth of two minute noodles, exactly. <laughs> But with crypto, you only need a one cent buy-in and you only need an internet connection. Now, when you understand that you only need a one cent buy-in and it's 24 hours a day and you don't need to be part of a bank and it's open to everyone on the planet, Hmm. but you think that two thirds of the world's population is unbanked, you actually start to see, oh, hang on a second, it's operating six times more being open than traditional markets. Everyone can come into it because it's not a $500 buy-in. You don't need to be part of a bank. And then the sheer fact that there is the market caps are so small. When you actually map out how much money there is in the world, mm. there is like, it's like literally the crypto markets are a drop in the oceans of the world. It, it really, the markets are that small. So if you take figuratively one drop out of the ocean and put it to a glass, that's the crypto markets. So imagine that you take a cup of water out of the ocean and you pour it into the other cup. Mm. That's why it can do a million X. People think, oh, it's a scam because it does a, a, a million X in a year. No, 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 no. It's just that money is moving. Just as money moved out of Kodak into digital mm. and out of Blockbuster into Netflix and out of everything like libraries into the internet, we are now seeing that with the internet of money. There is so much money in the world, unforeseeable amounts. like mind-boggling amounts of money and all you need is half a percent of that money not even one tenth of one percent of that money to move into the crypto markets and you're looking at market caps in the trillions upon trillions if not quadrillions of dollars and yet currently the entire crypto markets are a mere one trillion dollars and people are waking up to this not because they just want to invest and get rich and get that lambo because but because also they understand that the banking sector is so prehistoric Mm. if i want to send money from Australia, like Sydney to London, what do I have to do? Well, I've got to go go to a bank, I've got to f- do some type of paperwork, I've got to fill out swift network forms, I've got to say what my name, age, date, birth, this and that. Then I've got to wait three to five business days. If it's a weekend or a public holiday, it's going to pan out longer. If the bank doesn't like it, they're going to stop it. That is absolute caveman, prehistoric, corrupt, broken technology. Yeah. Right now, I can send money to anywhere on planet earth anyone who's got a web address or sorry a, a crypto address a crypto wallet address mm-hmm. i can send it from me to them at arguably the speed of light for free why on earth would i use a banking sector not all the middlemen not everyone having a piece of it not mm-hmm. about the, the bank right. holding onto your money for you know several days while they can make interest on it it is about yeah cutting all that out and actually yeah, and, and everybody gains out of it. the person buying the person selling you know yep no exchange rates no yep. arbitrage now, of course, people, the, the government, the, the governments will say two reasons, and this is, this is not an anti-government uh, rage. Sure, rant, but you, uh, you rant, can if rather. you want. Yeah, it's a safe space here for that, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the governments will give you two excuses. Yep. They'll say tax and terrorism. Uh-huh. Now, tax I can easily say, um, counter. Everything's on the blockchain, you can see it. If you want hmm. to dodge tax, you don't use crypto. No. You use HSBC or cash, as yep. in you use big banks or cash. That's what you do. And the same is for terrorism. If you want to be a terrorist, you don't use crypto because you can track it and there's on and off ramps. You use big banks or and or cash. 
So those two arguments that governments put forward, which is fair enough, they want their tax and they want to stop terrorism. Okay, you kind of can't really argue against it. But ultimately, crypto isn't the space to avoid that. So when governments come in and say, we can't, inf we can't tolerate Bitcoin or crypto because of tax and terrorism, you have to counter that argument and say, right, well, we need to shut down banks and cash because that's where the terrorism mm. and tax evasion is occurring. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm absolutely hearing you. Just to wind back a, 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 a few minutes, um, can you explain to the audience what is market cap and then how much it's, uh, the crypto market cap has grown in the last, say, three to five years? Yeah, sure. So. A market cap in any market is how much money is in that market in simple terms. So okay. I'll, I'll keep it very simple. Let's say I make two Adam Stokes shares and each one of those Adam Stokes shares is worth a dollar. So the Adam Stokes share market is $1 per share. There's two shares. Mm -hmm. So that market cap is $2. If everyone likes these Adam Stokes shares and suddenly they want to pay $10 per share, there is now two shares times $10, so it's $20. When they got to $1,000, the market cap is $1,000. So the market cap is calculated by the quantity of units in that market times the price of those units. And the market cap of all the cryptocurrencies at the moment, all the units of crypto within crypto, times the amount that they're worth is about $1 trillion US dollars, which in the big scheme of things is like I described before. It's like a drop in a glass compared to the ocean of money out there. Right. So what was it five years ago? The, the highest, uh, about five years ago, it was in just the billions. I think I think yeah. I have to look at the data, but it's about 200 billion, about 100 billion. Yeah, that's and we're right. now, uh, we're now, we've hit the trillion dollar mark. And from, in, in the last cycle, Bitcoin itself was a trillion dollars. But now, currently, the, the entire crypto market is, is about a trillion dollars. So I'm quite comfortable, not financial advice, and investments come with risk, and this is just my opinion. I'm quite comfortable we're going to see these markets move to the hundreds of trillions, to the quadrillions, to the quintillions of money. Yeah, We're talking uh, about trillions and trillions of dollars, but where it gets complicated and difficult to understand how much something is worth, the dollar is collapsing. So let's mm. say crypto does nothing at the moment and just holds its value constantly. It's going to go up because what it is compared to, the dollar, is it's continually cool. going down. Absolutely. So by nominal amounts, you have a thing called a nominal value and a real value. A nominal value is one, two, three, four, five. A real value is what can I actually buy with this thing? Mm. You might think of, of gold. An ounce of gold has pretty much held its real value or its purchasing power throughout history. An ounce of gold 100 years ago could pretty much buy the same stuff of what amount of stuff of what a ounce of gold could buy today. So that doesn't show that gold makes you a lot of money. The nominal amount has gone up. Like when so, I was a kid, I can remember gold was like, I think $350 an ounce. Now it's like two grand an ounce. Yes. It actually hasn't gone up. The nominal amount has gone up, but the purchasing power or the real value has more or less remained consistent. Yep. When we look at Bitcoin, both have gone up. The nominal amount has gone up and the real value has gone up. Absolutely fantastic. Now, Adam, I tell you right now, I, I, I'm getting so much from this. Uh, I really am because I love when things are laid out and they're just in simple terms. We don't get caught up in all the fancy jargon and we talk about, you know, real how it relates in my real life. And I really appreciate that, mate. One thing I will do, though, is can I hold you on the line and let's have a bit of a song? We're going to pay some bills around here. It's Edge Radio Australia. It's a crypto hour of power. Revival is, of course, Johnny D's on injectors as he was back then. It's about quarter two. You're doing the Edge Radio thing and be exact about what we're doing. We're doing the Crypto Hour of Power with Brandon. And on the phone, we've got Adam Stokes, a bit of an expert. And I'll tell you what, Tim, good bloke. Um, mate, welcome back. Great to be back. Oh, good. Did you enjoy the music, mate? Did you kick back and enjoy a little Johnny Diesel? <laughs> you know what? I actually have. Uh, don't tell anyone this, but I've got Diesel CD from when I was a teenager. <laughs> oh, you, you've just been outed. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got a few questions, my friend. Yes. All yes. right. We'll just fire straight back into it. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, the I suppose that I've written here development. You know, so like the development um, that's happened over the last sort of two, three, 
four years in, in crypto has just been exponential. Like I remember when we, I first got into it four or five years ago, they were talking about, oh, you know, we're going to have banks and we're going to have this and countries are going to adopt it and, you know, sports teams and all that sort of stuff. And it was a pipe dream, you know. But the, the mm-hmm. development in the, in the last few years uh, has just been absolutely just gone through the roof. Um, what are some of the things that, that that's really interested in you, with, with you um, that sort of made you sort of, you know, pick your ears up type of thing? Well, the, the number one thing that got me into crypto, as I mentioned, was, of course, we, we come for the money. We come for the Lambo, but we stay for the re- evolution. Mm. But what's actually happening at the moment, first of all, you have to make the distinction between a smart coin and a dumb coin. Yes. So a dumb coin <laughs> is actually Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't claim to do anything more than simply be a medium, a store of value, a okay. medium of st- exchange, and a unit of account. But actually beyond that is it's in fact the most secure payment network in the history of humanity um it's kind of difficult to understand because we don't understand what secure payment rails are what what's a secure payment network well in the past that was giving all of your money to a middleman a bank they were the secure system and then they would control your money and do bad things or something with your money and perhaps even lose it lend it out or do whatever block it, stop it, seize it, monitor it, and then send it on. That was the only secure payment system we knew of the past beyond holding, you know, dollars and cents underneath your your mattress. Then we go on to a smart coin. What a smart coin is, is in fact, the ability to do things that needed a middleman in the past, but we no longer need these middlemen or institutions to run algorithms. So you might actually think of something like the ownership of a land title. In the past, you needed lawyers and and admin staff and people in the middle to say, this is a land title, here we sign it, there we have a witness to it. Someone in the middle has to ensure that we have someone smart, someone in control of this land title or this, this ownership of something physical. Well, now through the power of blockchain and the decentralization of these systems, we in fact have something that's called smart contracts. Smart contracts is something most people might think of Ethereum, yeah. Ethereum is the, the, the beginning of a smart contract. All coins are dumb in the sense that they can do store of value, medium of exchange, and a unit of account. Any crypto can do that. If you want value sent to you from point A to point B, any cryptocurrency can do that. Only some cryptocurrencies, which is in fact now the majority because everyone's competing to bid the next Ethereum as Bitcoin, as the dumb coin, has secured its place in the market. Mm. And the real competitor now is the smart coins. We now have this ability to build upon these platforms to make whatever you want to make. You're going to see AI using smart cryptocurrency technology and blockchain blockchain technology in the background. Doctors, lawyers, accountants, these are all in fact industries that crypto can, I wouldn't say replace entirely, but mm-hmm. certainly supersede a lot of the groundwork that's done in these, in these uh, firms and institutions medical science as an example it will all rely on the blockchain and artificial intelligence which is all kind of wrapping into one to create these better products for in fact humanity and then when we look at the unique ownership of assets whether they're physical or digital these smart contracts will enable it so many people think of nfts as an example of Mm. owning a digital asset a digital image this unique digital image that's only the very beginning of it you're going to see marriage certificates, land titles, graduation certificates, medical certificates, mm. any type of something that needs authentication. Right. That That is going to be an NFT. Your driver's license, when a cop pulls you over in the future, they're not going to ask for your driver's license. They're going to ask for your <coughs> QR code. They're going to scan your QR code, which will either be a card in your pocket or probably a tattoo on your skin or a microchip underneath your skin. I know we're reaching far forward, but it is moving so quickly. Oh, yeah, and in we're some talking countries, about what, 2030 at this stage. Well, it's already happened in China. Yes. So you've, you've already got a thing called Palm Pass or mm. Palm Wave. Well, mm. And it's not complicated technology. You literally take the microchip out of your phone or out of your um, uh, credit card and you just insert it underneath the skin. You make it, And you don't have to worry about it being big. We can get these things much smaller than a grain of rice. And now you never have to worry about forgetting your wallet. You can just go up to the, you know, the, the point of sale terminal at Woolies or Coles, buy your milk, put your hand on the FPOS machine, and it will just scan it the same as with your credit card or your phone. Yeah, if you making... think of our lifetime, we went from cash to credit cards to phones. Well, now it's just going to be a chip in your watch or your, your hand if you want. Of course, this leads into some of the moral challenges. It does. Do you want 
<laughs> microchips in your hand. That's for another discussion. Yes, the, that's, uh... the reality is the technology exists, and these things yeah. are moving so quickly that you can't turn your back on this. Just as you said, might have said years ago, oh, I'm not going to use the internet. Well, okay, if you want to do business with me and you expect me to write letters with a pen and quill and put it in an envelope and walk down to the post office and send it to you, when I could just write you an email or pick up the phone and talk to you, I'm not going to do business with people who are using quills and sailing ships to pass information around the world. Right. I'm going to use the internet. And the same is happening with blockchain technology. I'm not going to wait three to five business days for you to send money from point A to point B. I'm just going to text it to you via the blockchain. And the same is with digital ownership. Police departments, as an example, they're not mm -hmm. going to wait to call back to base to say, can you do a rego check on this number? It's just going to happen instantly sure. with the new information and knowledge management that we have available to us. Yeah, no, I'm hearing you, mate. Um, well, going into just a, a slight little little caveat. Um, investing in crypto, what's the difference between investing in a stock in the stock market and investing in crypto? A great question. Nothing really. So it depends which crypto. So there are over 22,000 cryptos. When you invest in a stock market, so what happens is you have a company that goes public. So you and I make a company called Adam and Brendan Incorporated, and we decide to go public. So we say, right, there's going to be a thousand shares and we're going to release them on the Australian Stock Exchange. And anyone who believes in Adam and Brendan Incorporated, they can put money into our market. We have to register with the with ASIC, the Australian Securities sure. and Exchange Commission, and we have to be very open and transparent. And people are really investing into our company. and what they believe that we can de can deliver if we start delivering some good stuff we return profits with dividends we might pay out uh, uh shareholders dividends every quarter mm -hmm. or every year or they may not be franked and you can just buy low and sell high that's essentially what shares are you, you're right. buying a piece of the company now we go into crypto there are two parts to this bitcoin and everything else so with bitcoin there is no company there is no Bitcoin manager. There is no Bitcoin person or CEO or board. It is just a mathematical code. So when you're buying into crypto, many people think it's like a share and it feels like a share and it looks like a share and it acts like a share in the sense that you buy low and you sell high mm. and you can watch it on a chart going up and down. But Bitcoin is in fact a global payment system. And the payment system of Bitcoin can be broken into 21 million parts, which is called a Bitcoin. And within each Bitcoin, there's 100 million Satoshis, which you might like to look at like a Bitcoin cent. Just as there's 100 cents in a dollar, mm -hmm. there are 100 million Satoshis in a Bitcoin. Gotcha. And no one is, in fact, controlling that except the market. That is, if many people buy into Bitcoin and use Bitcoin, mm -hmm. Bitcoin price goes up because there's a high demand on it. If many people sell out of Bitcoin, the same with shares, the price goes down because there's a lower demand on it. Now, when we go on to the other 22,000 cryptocurrencies out there, they are, in fact, kind of like businesses. Someone has made a business, mm. whether it's a better Bitcoin, whether it's an Ethereum, whether it's a better Ethereum or a worse Ethereum, and people invest into that business, that concept, that coin. The difference is where people are getting burnt is that these coins don't have to register or be monitored with something like the Australian Security and Exchange Commission. No, they've got something they even better, you know, called a white paper and they can see everything that's on um, on chain. Yeah, well, with the white paper, though, what was happening in the 2017 cycle oh, is yeah. there was the big ICO scam. So you might yeah. think of it, an IPO, which is traditional shares, which is mm. an initial public offering. I say I'm going to build a new company. I write a white paper. I say, who wants to invest in it? It's not launched yet. Who believes me? Who thinks that this will do well? You get in early. You take the biggest risk. And if it works, you make a lot of money. Ask the people of Google or Amazon how that went for them. Very well indeed. But with ICOs, which was the initial coin offerings, these were just white papers that people were putting out there. And, you know, they could have been Russian. And I say that because there were a lot of Russian scams out there. I'm not okay. saying Russia is a scam. I've got to be politically correct here. But I'm saying that's where a lot of them were coming out, where they would take a white paper. They would just copy and paste this white paper. They would put a very good marketing campaign behind it. Poor old mum and dad would log on to youtube or facebook was where the most majority were and i'd right. say this is going to be the next biggest coin in the world it's going to be better than bitcoin it's got to be better than ethereum everyone would pour their money into it and once the founder of that white paper who 
was nameless, faceless, mm. didn't register with any commission. Right. They take all the money that everyone invested and they ran away. Yeah. And now that can still happen and still does happen. And that is the scam component. Well, yeah, well, that, that happens in any market, let's face it. Well said, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just because, I, I, and I, I normally um, regularly appear on Martin North's yeah. channel. So Martin North is an Australian economist. He's been on sixty Minutes. Has some very big names, and he's like a trad trad, very um, smart, sure. old, wise man. Not too old, but <laughs> he, um, he 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 put that to me. He goes, "Well, you know, there's so many coins that collapse." And I said, "Well, there's so many businesses that collapse. Yeah. If you look at business, you know, you you pretty much have got about one to two percent success rate success yeah. rate globally throughout history." Now, does that mean business is a scam? Mm. It's like, well, no, it's just that business is hard. And 98% of shares collapse. But that doesn't mean the stock exchange is a scam. It just means it's really hard to make money. What happens in crypto is that it's just really easy to make a coin. So to register a business is actually a lot of work and really hard to do. Whereas in crypto, I could literally tonight in the next two hours copy and paste a white paper copy and paste the code of someone else's coin, launch it onto a decentralized exchange, which they call the DEX, and I'm in business. I've asked for, and I don't even have to let anyone know what my name is, what my face is, where I live, anything. And that's the power and danger of the internet. The internet is faceless in many ways, but we are just so used to centralized money, centralized business, that it, it creates a lot of opportunity to be scammed. And equally make a lot of money. I think because a lot of people don't know, and I certainly was one of them, I, I believe it or not, still thought that a lot of the country still ran on the gold standard, that, you know, money actually had to have a basis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when I had the rude awakening about the old fiat uh, system, as far as, you know, realising, no, you look at the US economy, no, look, we'll just print it. We, it's not based on anything. We'll just keep printing more. And obviously that you know feeds inflation. It obviously drops the value of, of the actual dollar in your hand, all that sort of thing. Yep. So it, yeah, when you look at it that way, you know, crypto has got so many opportunities. And in some ways, like, okay, if, look, if those dollars and cents you know, floating on the US you know, stock exchange haven't got any basis, at least when you go into crypto, you can go, oh, hang on, this one's got, this is based on something. There's a business behind it. There's a, there's a product behind it, you know? Yeah, well, yeah, and it, it really comes to scarcity as well. And I'm glad you you created the space for this part of the discussion because this is the fundamental of Bitcoin. So let's not worry about the 22 other thousand coins at the moment. Let's first focus on Bitcoin. What's the difference between Bitcoin and fiat? Mm-hmm. Primarily the supply. Sure. That is, how, ma- how many dollars are there in the world? Unlimited. Australia prints money. England prints money. Uh, America prints money. Pretty much all nations print money. Yeah. The, the biggest lie that we've been told is that money is sort of finite or linked to gold. Mm. Gold hasn't been part of money mm. since 1971. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. They, they, they ran out of money. The Americans ran out of money during the Vietnam War, yeah, and they basically so. delinked gold from the US dollar, and then they just had the right to keep printing this stuff. Now, why do they have the right to keep printing it? It's because it's backed by a war machine. Yep. Mm, by the army. Bit, Bitcoin is a money of peace whilst fiat is a money of war. I'll give you a micro and a macro example. If you choose, as I'll go macro first. If you choose to be a country that says, we're no longer going to use the petrodollar, which is the US dollar, yeah. which means all oil that's moved around the world, bought and sold around the world, has to go through the US dollar, which creates a demand on that US dollar, which gives it a value because there's a demand on it. If you say, no, I'm going to use my own currency, you can expect to end up like Gaddafi or Saddam Hussein. Yeah, that's that's right. what happened very, to those two dead. leaders. And now I'm not saying they're good people. I'm saying that's why they were taken out because they said, we're no longer using the US <laughs> dollar to buy and sell our oil. We're going to use our own money or gold. Mm-hmm. Well, ask how that went for them. Well, you won't be able to ask them because they no longer exist. <laughs> no, okay. Well, th- then, yeah, let's not go into, uh, you know, so international that's... politics. But the reality is right now, <laughs> you've got a Russian economy which is based on gold, right? Um, and, you know... It's there seems to be something going on. A little skirmish over there. Um, yeah, it might have something to do with the, the, exactly the war machine you're talking about. Who knows? Yeah, look. Well, if, <laughs> if you actually look at what Putin did, people want to say he's dumb and he's evil. Now, maybe he's evil, but he's definitely not dumb. No, definitely not. So, it, so in the past, any oil that was bought and sold from Russia had to go through the petrodollar, Correct. which is yes. the U.S. dollar. So when we put sanctions and we, again, we use money as a, or sorry, dollars as a 
money backed by a war machine. Hmm. They basically said, you can no longer use the US dollar because we put sanctions on you to buy and sell your oil. And they're like, okay, <laughs> you've now got to use the ruble to buy and sell our oil. So what happened to the ruble? The ruble was shot through the roof yep, because yep. Europe and other countries, including China, they were actually not only told, hey, if you don't use our uh, money, our US dollar will bomb you and kill you. They went the other way and said, you're not allowed to use our money. And they're like, okay, we're going to use our money, which is why the weaponization of money is catastrophic for the world because Absolutely. countries have to pull out of the US dollar. They have to for two reasons. One, they keep printing the stuff and mm -hmm. it's unlimited. So one country gets to print unlimited money based on nothing to buy real value. They print fake value to buy real value aircraft carriers, gold, buildings, oil, whatever. Mm. But the second part, and that's not fair. It's not fair, no, no matter who, even if China did it to us or we did it to China, it's just, it's called market failure. It, it's not going to work. And all fear comes to the end of the line. <laughs> but the second part to this is if, let's say we all agree to use the US dollar or we all agree to use the ruble or the yuan. But one day we, we do something that China doesn't like and we're using the yuan as a global reserve currency and says, and China says, Australia, we don't like what you just did, so we're turning off your money. Mm -hmm. Well, we have no choice. We have to use another money. And this is why Russia and China and India and all these nations, Bricks. they have to use another money. Because when you weaponize money to say, A, use it or we'll kill you, or B, if you don't use it, <laughs> we'll kill you. <laughs> yep. you, you or, or C, I should say, if, you, if we don't like what you're doing, we're going to turn it off. You have no choice. You have to go to another money, of course you do. which is why the US dollar is collapsing, because the demand is dropping on it and they keep printing more of it. Now, let's put this in contrast with Bitcoin. Who prints Bitcoin? No one. It's in a code. How many Bitcoin are there? There's 21 million. Yep. So you have a fixed supply and no one's printing it. Now, who can stop Bitcoin? No one. Mm -hmm. Who yep. can block it? No one. So that's what we mean by this open, immutable, borderless, censorship-resistant money that is fair for everyone. It's like, let's say you and I play sport. We've got the same rules. Sure. Whether you're playing for Russia or America, the rules on the sporting field are the same. And if you look at business or economics, you must have an even playing field. And if one country or one side can print all the money and then change the rules, people aren't going to play that game, which is why people are pulling out of the game of fiat. Mm. It's not fair. Well, the game's why been played like that for a very, very long time. People don't know any other way. For 52 years. Mm. And if you look out through, through history... Uh, um, most fiats die within 50 years. Okay. So fiat's not new. No, you okay. you yeah. had it, the Roman Empire, yeah. and you've had, the, and you also had the fall of empires. You had the the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, the Dutch Empire, the British Empire, and now we've got the American Empire. And it's not because of a colour or a flag or a religion or a language or anything. It's just because of the rules of the universe. The universe. The uni The rules of the universe are things are always changing. Fiat always collapses. Nothing will survive in market failure. And ultimately, fiat is the biggest scam in history. The reason why it's so difficult to grasp the concept of Bitcoin, which is finite and fair, is because we've never had anything like it. Mm. Some people say gold is the answer. Now, I've got no, no mm. um, problem with gold, except I can't use gold down at Woolies to buy a loaf of bread. I mean, really, how am I going to do it? Should take a bit down, shave off a bit, weigh it, test That's it for right. purity? And then what are they going to do with the gold? Take it out the back, put it in a vault? I mean, just caveman stuff. Equally, I can't go into Amazon and use a bit of gold to buy something off Amazon. So gold doesn't work in normal commerce. Mm. And then when we say, what's the supply of gold? Well, there's about two Olympic-sized swimming pools of gold that we've pulled out of the ground. But what happens if we come across another vein of, of gold or a big storage, a big, uh, uh, I guess, mine of gold at the bottom of the Grand Canyon or something, and suddenly we double the supply of gold? Well, that's going to cut the price of Absolutely. gold in half. So Bitcoin, we can see it. We know there's 21 million. We can see where they are. It's an even playing field. No one can print more of it. No one can stop it. No one can block it. And that is why people are shifting from fake money, fiat, to real money, which is Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, and we were just, um, Aaron and I we were talking when we were just off air before the the song about um, incentives and um, and the motivation, like the people who got skin in the game, like the banks, the mainstream media, that sort of stuff that have really got a lot of FUD uh, about crypto. 
you know we're, we're, they're just fighting back against mm. this system because it's not it, they're not incentivized to, to adopt it um, uh, go into that a bit like wh- where do you think all this pushback is from mainstream media and like you know governments and that sort of stuff against crypto every single industry in humanity in history every industry in history has evolved the only one that hasn't evolved is the banking sector. Okay. Now you might say, "Well, hang on, Adam. They've got internet. They've got internet banking, and they've got ATMs." No, no, no. The background is exactly the same. Sure. Centralized fake money with fractional reserve lending. They have never ever had any competition, and now they do. Yep. So just as cigarette companies, when that was when the the jig was up, and they said, "Well, actually, cigarettes are killing people." Oh no, no, no cigarettes are good for you. Or <laughs> the, this doctor said cigarettes were good. Or sugar, or anything that we can see, when people are going to lose market share, yep. they will do everything in their power to hold their market share. It's not necessarily because they're bad. It's because they have an obligation to the mm. to the shareholder. They actually sure. legally have to fight to keep the value of that. Now, banks are over because everyone now is starting to learn. Well, hang on a second. There is no money. It's not linked to anything. You keep printing more of it. You get to fractionally reserve lender, which means when you go and get a home loan, they only have to have, as I keep the numbers simple, let's say it's 5%, and you go to the bank and say, hey, I want to borrow $100,000. They only need $5,000 in reserves, and the other $95,000 is printed out of thin air. It yep. doesn't exist. And that dilutes everyone money. So they lend you money that they never had. Then you have to pay interest back on money that they never had. And then when the whole system collapses like a global financial crisis, what's their reward for all of this criminal and immoral play? They get a bail in with your tax dollars (laughs) or a bail out with your savings. And people are waking up to this. It's you cannot operate in this market failure. So the technology of blockchain and crypto is undeniable, which is why they're moving to CBDCs. But the new money that is scarce, hard, immutable, open source, censorship resistant and available to everyone, that's the real breakthrough. And the banks hate it. They hate it because they can't fractionally reserve lend it. They can't make fake Bitcoin. Mm. They can't just magically print more of it. They can't get bailouts from economies or governments who just print more money out of thin air when it all falls to pieces. They now actually have to perform like poor old Joe at the cafe who has to make sure he's making profit on his coffee and making good coffee at a good price with good customer service, looking after his stock and looking after his supply. He can't just magically print coffee out of thin air. He actually has to to run a good business. Banks have been running this scam for years. They Mm -hmm. print money out of thin air. They can block, see, stop, monitor, lend out your money, create money that they've never had. And of course, naturally, they are going to do everything in their power yep. to say, Bitcoin's scam, yes. Bitcoin's bad, don't trust them, trust us. We've crashed economies before, we've created mm. inflation and hyperinflation, but this time we'll get it right. Yeah, this trust time. Us. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like oh. socialism and communism, you know, uh, they just didn't get yeah, it yeah, right. They, they, you know? yeah. they got socialism wrong, but yeah. we'll get yeah, it right. that's oh, right. We were. I love the fact that you used uh, Joe yeah. as your example. I mean, look, Joe's never been known to print money, so. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the current Joe. <laughs> uh, but the, that's what I say to people that go, um, oh, you know, oh, Bitcoin and crypto, it's magic internet money. And I'm like, yeah, my magic internet money um, is uh, a lot better than your magic inter- internet money. <laughs> You know, which is what the banks are printing. At least mine's backed by something. It can't be controlled, can't be manipulated, you know? Yeah, the first question I I always give to everyone when they say Bitcoin's a scam. So the number one thing is they hear the narrative that the banks have been sponsoring and they say Bitcoin's a scam. So the very first thing you need to do is is in establishing these conversations, whether you're a listener at the moment trying to figure out what is this Bitcoin thing or you understand Bitcoin and you're trying to explain it to others. The very first question you need to ask yourself or the other person is, what's money? And and once you actually break down, okay, well, it's a store of value, medium of exchange, a unit of account, okay, what backs money? Now, most people will say gold backs it. And when you Mm. say, well, no, it doesn't back it, they say, well, what backs it? And you say, a war machine. Yeah. If you, as I was saying before, with the macro example, if you don't use it for the petrodollar, Militaries will rock up at your your doorstep and kill you. If you don't use it at the micro level, men with guns will come to your house and arrest you. That is a money of war and a money of violence. I know that's kind of hard to grasp at first, but that is 
absolutely what fiat is. When you actually understand, and then the next part to that is saying, well, how much money is there? And, and people say, what do you mean how much money? And they say, well, what's the supply of money? And once that people actually start to realize that money is unlimited, that is, they just keep printing the crap. Mm. They keep printing this fake, useless crap that you have to accept or you'll be locked in a cage or blown up. People are like, wait on a second, that doesn't sound fair. I want a fair go. And that's why I think in Australia, we're really adopting Bitcoin. Not because, sure, we're investors and we like sure. to have a bit of a punt. We like to be investors. But we believe fundamentally in our culture as a people. We want a fair go. Mm. And if you over there, bank, can print money and get paid for it, as in bail-in, bail-out, and fees and so forth, but if I print money, I go to jail. <laughs> that's called counterfeiting. That's not a fair go. hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Oh, look, I love the fact that you've rolled it back to a fair go. I think that's very, very true because Australians have embraced, you know, a lot of us have embraced crypto, let's face it. And I think you, you are spot on that freedom that for the fact that we aren't being controlled by outside forces, we, we're taking control of our own destiny. And a big part of it, a massive part of our listenership is people who are wanting to step out of that, that controlled world. Yeah, well, the next part is we don't like theft. No. And, <laughs> and, and inflation is straight out theft. I, I acknowledge that some people say tax is theft, but look, I, I've lived in third world countries. We need roads, we need infrastructure, mm. we need police, we need militaries. And those things cost money. And you know what? Fair enough. But when you keep printing money and you take away 10 to 20% of everything I did over the last year, so you work really hard, you save really hard, you make sacrifices, you do everything right, you don't even spend any money, you pay your taxes, you've kept your part of the deal, and then suddenly they print a whole lot of money and you've just lost 10% or 20%. People need to realize that every five years under fiat, every five years, your money is cut in half. Yep. Your nominal amount looks the same. So it still looks like you've got 10 grand in the bank, but now you can only buy half as much stuff. Yep. And that's after paying tax and before yep. pay, paying your GST. So you're constantly paying tax when you earn it and when you spend it. So you're paying tax on both ends of it. But when you've got inflation, which is the invisible and horrific tax where people are stealing your money by these banks and centralized bodies, printing more of this money that you worked hard for, hard for, which is diluting what you've worked for and diluting what you've held. Once you start to realize that you're losing 50% of your money every five years, you have every right to be angry. Mm. And I say, don't get angry, just mm. walk away. You don't even have to get even. Just simply walk away from the biggest Ponzi scheme in the history of humanity, which is fiat, and come over to a fair, open, immutable, all-inclusive money that is Bitcoin. Success yeah. is the best revenge. Yeah. Oh, well said. Yeah. <laughs> Great way to end. All right, um, just before we go, Adam, um, once again, appreciate your time, mate. It's always great talking to you uh, and, and all the content that you provide. Um, so, yeah, just uh, get your shill on, mate. Um, promote, uh, you know, whatever you want to promote, um, your website, um, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's been a lot of fun. You guys are a lot of fun. When, if you want to learn more from me, I just go to either Spotify or YouTube and put in Adam Stokes, A-D-A-M-S-T-O-K-E-S. -E uh, all my information is free. If you want to do anything crypto safely, head over to the crypto.land. That's one safe and secure site built for everyone who isn't sure. They don't want to be scammed. Uh, everything in crypto and life is a risk, but all the sites that I use, all the buying, the selling, the hardware wallets, the research, go to www.thecrypto.land. Follow me on Spotify, Adam underscore Stokesy. Or finally, if you want to learn more about trading, buy my book on Amazon, 28 Pro Trader Tips, The Art of Trading. Yep, it's a great book, great book. And you know Adam's legit when he's been kicked off YouTube for, for saying oh. the wrong things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, hey, there's your fact checking That's my right battle there. Right there. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, thanks again for your time, mate. So I'll give you a call a bit later. I really My appreciate pleasure. it. Thanks, Adam, mate. actually, I've chosen a song, mate. Uh, I always like to end these shows uh, with a song that kind of sums up uh, a bit of what we've uh, gone through. So I'm going, Billy Joel, we didn't start the fire. <laughs> nice. Brilliant. Uh, it's Edge Radio later. Australia. Thanks, Adam. Crypto Hour of Power. Five, four, three. Unlock the power of cryptocurrency with Orange Brick Road as your guide. The homepage provides an overview of our services, crypto education, 
consulting, trading, tax, bookkeeping, loans, real-world assets, estate planning, scam recovery, and more. Explore our comprehensive courses tailored for beginners to advanced crypto enthusiasts. Our team of experts offers personalized consulting across all aspects of crypto, including everything from how to purchase your very first crypto coin, the importance of security, reporting requirements, and the latest developments in the decentralized finance world. Join our thriving community, attend events, and network with like-minded individuals. Stay up to date with our blog covering the latest crypto trends and analysis. Get started today by enrolling in a course or booking a consultation. Navigate the crypto world with confidence. Orange Brick Road, your path to understanding.